I'm, I'm a hostage and uh, this villa has been converted into a jail. All the windows are barred shut. I can't open any. I don't know when I'll be released and what the conditions will be like when I'm released. Um, every day I am worried about my safety and my life. Um, don't really know if I'm going to survive the situation. Uh, the police threatened me that I'll be in prison my whole life and I'll never see the sun again. So I'm not allowed to drive. I'm not allowed to travel or leave Dubai at all. I can't. I haven't left the country since 2000. Uh, I've been asking a lot to, just to go traveling, to study, to, to do anything normal. They, they don't let me. That's my life basically. It's very restricted. I need to leave. I didn't hesitate. I would say yes, of course. That would be a great adventure. On this small boat, it was, I don't know how many commandos, maybe 12, 15, and the two Emirati, like, lieutenant sergeants, I was fighting. And uh, this guy came with a small uh, pouch, like a camouflage pouch, and uh, he took out the needle and he injected me in my arm, and I was, like, fighting. I was saying, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. He grabs me and he lifts me up and I'm like kicking and fighting and he's much bigger than me. So I see that his sleeve is rolled up and his arm is exposed. So I said, okay, you have one shot. So I just bite him as hard as I can and shake my head. And uh, he screamed. The same guy tranquilized me again. They put me on a stretcher and as they were carrying me up the steps of the private jet is when I passed out, like I lost consciousness. All I remember was the rocking and seeing the stairs and then I just passed out. I've been here ever since. I've been by myself, solitary confinement, um, no access to medical help, um, no trial, no charge, um, nothing. She was lying on the floor and her hands were tied behind her back and she was simply repeating, I'm seeking for political asylum. And she said to me it would be like a test to see how you will react around uh, people after being in prison for so long. And if you, if you act well, you react well, you're going to be out in a few days. Haya began to explain that uh, Latifa had quite a serious bipolar problem in a way that was very convincing. We don't want Latifa to go through any further trauma. Haya introduced Mary never said that she was the former UN uh, head of human rights, never. Um, if I knew that, of course, like I would have said everything, but um, no, she never told me that. The topics that we discussed during that lunch were sports, veganism, the environment. Do you regret not asking her more directly about the video or about, about her situation? I thought about it and I, I suppose I'm not very familiar with people who are bipolar. I, I didn't know how to address somebody who was bipolar about their trauma, etc. I decided to give a pass on that. So, you know, I wanted to talk to her doctors, but I really didn't actually want to talk to her and, and increase the trauma over a nice lunch. 
like we never discussed me, uh, we never discussed my case. I was misled initially by my good friend, Princess Haya, because she was misled. It was all a setup. It was like they tricked me. And the major uh, international news is that my stepmother is getting a divorce. Life of Dubai's billionaire ruler has reportedly fled to London with her two children. She's currently in hiding in London, allegedly in fear for her life. Today, we are here to celebrate all that women are achieving. We are incredibly grateful to be joined by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed. Your presence here means so much. Extraordinary and damning allegations of abduction and intimidation. It was a big breakthrough for all of us. I thought that would have been um, a great evidence for the UN to, to um, make a public statement, to, to pressurize the UAE more, or you know something that could have quickly led to her release. But Latifa was still held a prisoner. I'm just getting so tired of everything. Um, it's like a circus. I don't want to be a hostage in this jail villa. I just want to be free. I don't I don't know what they're planning to do with me. I really don't know. So the, the situation is getting more desperate every day and um, I yeah, I'm just really really tired of this now. What if, what if I don't get to speak to her again? If we assume that she was caught with the phone, uh, her conditions now are probably a lot worse. Since a lot of time has passed, we've taken the decision to, to release some of this um, evidence. There's been some, uh, some sleepless nights thinking about this. Um, but, um, it's, 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 it's time to do something. Simple, it's like, am I free or am I not free? I'm not free, so okay, the world is, is gonna know that I'm not free. I feel that she would want us to fight for her. Anybody who cares is gonna know that I'm not free and I'm not gonna go along with their propaganda. It's just how I am. <laughs>